service call on an ice machine not working. It's pretty gnarly inside. When I arrive though, it's off. So we're gonna turn it on and then check everything out. But look at that. This thing needs to be clean. This machine is working. It's dirty inside too. We'll open this guy up, go to service to event log, view event log, 4.7 CXP, 4.6 curtain, waterfall, T4 fall, safe mode, this thing's got all kinds of problems in it. Um, so we're going to watch it right now, usually when I watch them I like to go into Responding. Service. Real time data. Time and temp. And then you can look at the temperatures. Obviously, the T4 sensor is bad. You can also look at your frequencies for your microphone thickness sensor. So, as you can see right here, this thing is just about to overflow. The water level is actually overflowing into the bin. And uh, water level low, yes. Water high, no. So water probe is going to be nice and dirty on this guy. This whole machine needs to be cleaned. So water level sensor is just calcified crazy. So we're going to set it in some cleaner, but we're going to recommend they do a thorough clean on this machine because that's dirty. It's so dirty that there was cobwebs back in here. So. We need to get to do a proper clean on this first before we can diagnose any further. Same thing goes with this other machine. They were complaining about it not making ice, but it needs to be cleaned first. So when you're cleaning, I suggest you use a pan that this thing can't fall over in because you don't want it to be submerged. Same thing with the water pump. I put it and just fill it up to where you can't accidentally tip it over and get the motor wet on the pump. And then just let the stuff soak. And if you look at it, this is going to be hard for you guys to see it, but you can actually see the bubbles coming off of the stuff so um, and I use the Viper nickel safe ice machine cleaner the stuff works great it's by refrigeration technologies you see that calcium comes right off now again this is not a thorough cleaning I'm gonna get them to approve me to come back and do a proper cleaning on this where I tear down the whole machine but I'm just trying to get them operating again get that calcium off there so it's not overflowing anymore we'll give them a rinse now do the same with the water pump so we are uh, gonna clean these ice machines up today uh, we had scheduled to do this and they were supposed to empty out the ice, but they didn't. So we filled up all their ice baths, gave them a bunch of ice for the day because I'm not going to have these machines running until about noon. And we're uh, dumping the rest of this out on the back dock. So. Okay, so at this point, all these, all these guys are off. So what we're going to do is go ahead and put them into clean mode. We're going to put this one into clean mode too. We're going to wait until it says add chemical. Once it says add chemical, we're going to pour ice machine cleaner into here. We're going to let it circulate once. Once it circulates, then we'll disassemble the machines and start scrubbing. The first thing it does on a clean cycle is it purges all the dirty water out. So you don't want to add cleaner to start because you'll have a problem. So it is technically safe to add cleaner right now because we're in the water fill cycle. If you know the sequence of operation of a cleaning, it dumps first. Then when the water fill's done, it tells you to add cleaner. After the water fill, it's gonna circulate for a set amount of time. That 37 minutes is the total time. That's not necessarily the rinse time because it's gonna do several dumps and then refills and then dumps and refills. Theoretically, you could add cleaner and not have to flush any of it out because the machine does it for you. I don't follow those steps. I kind of got my own way of doing it. So at this point right now, we're gonna go ahead and add a little bit of cleaner. We're following the manufacturer's instructions using the correct amount, okay? So um, we're using Viper Nickel Safe Cleaner, very, very good product by uh, Refrigeration Technologies, so. Okay, so now we're just gonna let it circulate. It's still in the water fill, but it's got cleaner running through it inside there so we're just going to let it circulate the first time it dumps the water the first rinse that's when we're going to go ahead and empty it out tear the machine apart put all the parts in my cleaning bucket down there fill it with ice machine cleaner and then we're going to get a hot wa uh, a water hose and start rinsing everything down and trying to descale this thing 
Now on a machine this dirty, it's gonna be hard to get all this scale off. It's never gonna completely come off because it's so, um, you know, neglected, but we'll do our best. Okay, so we are still in the uh, wash cycle, so it's still just circulating through. We're gonna let it keep going. Um, what we're doing right now is just kind of getting stuff ready. We're gonna run a water hose in a minute. There's one thing I wanna point out. I've got my Rubbermaid tote right here to put all my chemical in. But also too, you wanna think about where you set the chemical. You don't wanna put it on prep surfaces or where they have foods or anything. Like for instance, they have a counter right here. We don't wanna stack chemicals or tools on that because that's the customer's work surface. We wanna stay out of their way and try to be careful. So I'm using one of their carts, so cool with it. Keep my chemicals on that. And then I have all my, my tools and everything on my cart. And we'll kind of keep it out of their way too. It's in the dish area right now because they're not using it. But once they start using the dish area, we'll move it into somewhere else. We're always thinking about the customer. So at this point we are in the first rinse cycle. So once it's drained out, I turned off the water for both of the water filters. We'll go ahead and turn the machine off. We're not gonna let it fill and rinse again because we're gonna disassemble everything. So this one right here isn't there yet, but it'll be there in a minute. So as soon as it drains all the water out, we'll shut it off and take it apart. So, you know, we're trying to think logically. The whole top of this thing, this bin top was really nasty and sticky. So while we're waiting for these machines to drain out, we're wiping it down so we can lean on that today and not be all nasty. And you know, as you're got downtime, you know, look at, look at this stuff. You could be wiping this down. You know, keep moving, make the most, uh, make your stuff most efficient basically. Okay, just keep moving, keep doing. So I'm waiting for this last one to rinse. As soon as I hear the water stop draining, then I'll uh, turn it off and then we'll take it apart. Oh, you still pumping, don't do it yet. Okay, so the steps, we gotta wait till we shut it off, so wait till it's done. So the first thing we're gonna do is just disconnect the parts. The water pump comes out first, this hose unhooks, then the water um, level sensor comes out. And then once we get that stuff out, we can pull the curtains or the dampers, and then we can pull the drain pan and then put these and you know how pretty much be it and then we'll just start scrubbing okay so we're gonna go ahead and uh, disconnect disconnect and then we're gonna push our hose back up in out of the way it should push off kind of tricky get your hand up in here there's a clip on the back side if you can hear me pull the back clip the front clip water pump out and then just start disassembling the machine. We'll pull the drain pan out, everything else out. Okay, so on the bottom of these guys is a little set screw. I'm gonna take that set screw off. Again, not losing anything. All my screws are going in one pan, not getting lost, okay? Once we pull that set screw off, this guy pops off this way. Up and over. Now we have the water pump with the pan. Fill up with water and ice machine cleaner and it can't tip over, so that's why we use that pan. Water level sensor, we're going to pop it straight out, set these in this pan, and you don't want to overfill them, okay? Um, because uh, they can mess up the components. In fact, this one has a little bit too much in it. You typically, because these things are really start to become a problem, so you only want it to get to the tips of the sensors, is all you want it to do. So, and we'll, stack those like that. All these parts can just go in my bucket over here. And we're good. good work. All right, so we're gonna pull the curtains. Once we pull the curtains, I'm gonna push up on the machine, pull the drain pan. Make sure you be careful not to pour it out. Place where it go. Okay, next thing you're gonna pull is splash sheets. Then we're gonna pull spray rubs. Put everything in my bucket so it soaks. And spray rolls are coming out now, which is kind of tight hard to film but thumb screws pop them out ice thickness or water loaf or ice thickness microphone will come out and then we'll rinse with the hose you can see under here it's nice and clean nice and clean we'll see if I can't find a poop stick for you guys again with this uh this big hose up in there I got my big brush and we'll make a nice poopy one again 
until their dishwasher gets here, we're going to leave these uh, drain pans sitting up in here just soaking with cleaner so that way we can uh, clean those real good. Try to overfill them so that way we get to that area that never gets cleaned on these things. So I've got my brush soaked in cleaner and we're going to go ahead and see what we get out of this guy. This guy's going to be pretty nasty, I'm sure. All the way up in there. And you gotta watch out when it comes down because it'll surprise you in the face. Let's see what we get out of there. Oh yeah. Ooh. Oh man, look at that big old booger the hell out of there. Look at that. Dinner time. Let's rinse and see if we can get another one. Okay, so we're gonna push this brush all the way up into this other side. Let's see what we get out of this thing too. Yeah, give it a turn and then slowly pull it out. When it gets towards the bottom, go slow. I'm gonna put my hand here. That's dinner. Yummy. Look at that. Okay, so we've got a dump valve. I went ahead and unscrewed the bracket. What you're gonna do is twist and pull it apart. The coil's out now. Then you can go ahead and pull your plunger apart. Don't forget how they go together. And then watch out for your seal. And this boot should come out too. If you can get it out, you might have to use a screwdriver or something like that because it gets calcified in there. Side of that. That's why these things get stuck because they get full of calcium. So we may be able to fix that, we may not. We're gonna clean it and see what happens. If it's if it's the rubber's deteriorating, we'll have to replace it. But these things get stuck for that reason. So we're gonna soak this whole part, this whole part, and then we'll save the coil. We won't soak that obviously. Alright, so like I said, when these things are this dirty, you can only do so much. I'm not gonna spend any more time because that stuff's not coming off. It's just so neglected probably gonna end up changing this. I'm not even gonna mess with it because when they get this dirty and you try to soak them, they, they just become a problem. You get used to it. Same thing up in there. That's like styrofoam and you know, I scrub it and it just grinds away at the styrofoam. So there's only so much you can do here. So we're gonna go ahead and start assembling things slowly and we're gonna change uh, this um, water inlet valve is leaking by and we're probably gonna change water level probes too. So. We'll see. We'll get to it. Oh, the last thing is we're going to pop these off. These things get really nasty behind here, so we'll get in there and clean those real quick, too. So we're using the bin as a sink because now they're starting to use their kitchen. So we can basically scrub, rinse, everything goes down the drain. So utilize what you have. Okay, so we've uh, changed the thickness probe, changed the water level sensor, um, cleaned the dump valve, cleaned everything else. On this machine, we changed the water inlet valve, thickness sensor, water level probe. I have a feeling we're gonna have to change some uh, thermistors, but we'll get to that in a minute. We're running ice machine cleaner through it one more time, now that we've got it back all assembled. And again, you can only do so much, you can't get this stuff off. So we're running the ice machine cleaner through it, and when that's done, we'll run sanitizer and then do a sanitizing on the whole thing in the bin too. See all the stuff down at the bottom. And then uh, we'll start them up and diagnose from there. Okay, so I'm currently running sanitizer solution through it. Okay, but I've got uh, hot water and sanitizer mixed in here. We're just going to spray all the surfaces that we touched. Just let it naturally drip down. If you mix it correctly. You don't need to worry about it. Watch out for the circuit board and stuff. So spraying it in there. Spray it in here. Then. We put any ice diverters in there. That's it, we're just waiting for it to finish sanitizing now and then we'll watch it back. So, looks like we got some decent ice down there. The cubes, they look to be decent size. Don't see any problems with them. Looks to be even. We took a lunch and then came back up. There's, there's a booger on the wall, we'll have to get that out. Rinse it one more time, looks like we're still getting some shit coming down. But looking good so far. Diverters are doing their job breaking it up. We've got uh, iConnect stuff hooked up, that way I can see dual probes, so. And we're waiting for the next cycle so we can start, and I'm gonna log the temps, uh, or the pressures, and then compare them to the Manitowoc book, so. Looking good so far. Okay, so initially we had a service call on an ice machine not working, and 
you know, when I got there, the machine was, uh, it had a couple things going on. One of the issues that they complained about was the water was overflowing into the machine. Well, that was because the um, water level probe was extremely dirty and the water inlet valve was sticking open. Okay. So I went ahead and did a temporary cleaning, got the machine kind of operating and then I scheduled with them to come back and do a full cleaning, okay? Uh, the full cleanings for us, we don't joke around. Uh, they pretty much take a guy majority of the day. This time I had two people, so I was able to train another guy, and he just basically shadowed me as I was cleaning one machine. Um, I, I'm pretty thorough on these things, okay? I break them down 100%. I use my uh, soaking bucket. Uh, you know, as you saw, I... I kind of have my own method of cleaning. I pay attention to the instructions on how Manitowoc says to clean their machines, but then I also skip a few steps because I go a lot uh, more in depth into the way that I'm cleaning. Okay, so if you follow their instructions, they basically tell you to pour cleaner in there, let it circulate through, and move on. Well, I rip these things apart and tear them down because this customer does not do a regular routine preventative maintenance on these machines. And therefore, you saw, you know, the calcium buildup that I couldn't even get off of them. But anyways, so I go through them nice and thorough, soak the parts, sanitize the parts. I actually ran, I think, so all together, I think they had three soaks with ice machine cleaner. The first initial one, then I pulled all the parts and soaked them in ice machine cleaner. And then when I was all done and I put it back together, I, I ran ice machine cleaner through another cycle. Then when you're all done with that, you got to make sure you use the proper sanitizer to sanitize any surfaces that you touched. Uh, sanitize the inside of the bin, all that good stuff. And then after that, I went through and made sure the machines were working properly and watched a couple cycles. Now, I told the customer up front before they approved the ice machine cleaning that because of how dirty these were initially, there was no way I could diagnose them until after we did the cleaning. Uh, I already had approval and I know what I can do with this customer. So I went ahead and replaced a few parts as I was cleaning. And what you didn't see on camera was I also went ahead and replaced the thermistors in each machine that were bad because they had, I think the T4 thermistors were both reading. One, actually, I think one of them was a T3 and one of them was a T4 and they were both reading really high temperatures when there wasn't. So I changed those two. Okay. After we did all that and changed the, um, Inlet valve, water level probes, and thickness sensors on both machines pretty much. Actually, I only put an inlet valve on the left machine. But um, after we did that, the machines were working great. The pressures were right on the money where they should be. We also ran up onto the roof and checked the condenser out to make sure that it wasn't dirty or anything. And everything was good to go, okay? So sometimes it just takes a really good cleaning to get these things operating, okay? Really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch my videos. Um, that's pretty much it. Uh, pay attention to some of the other channels that are popping up right now, and I will uh, catch you guys on the next one, I guess, okay?